Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Georgetown High School, where we are here for the Crosstown Classic, a matchup between your Eastview Patriots and the home team, the Georgetown Eagles. This will be a very tough week for Eastview coming into this one. There are two teams left in the district that are 2-0. and Georgetown here tonight and Rouse, which uh, the Patriots will be playing on the road on Friday, so two very tough road games right here at the beginning of the uh, the district slate. But, you know, good to get him out of the way early. Having to travel to some of the top competition in district play. Hope you're all having a great night. Glad you're here. Glad you're listening. My name is Jack Farrell. We are here for our third game of the broadcast season. Eastview is 1-1 one and one in district play so far, losing to Liberty Hill on, what was that, Thursday. And then on Friday, we had a, an incredibly exciting game. Final score in that one, I believe, 18 to 17. Took a walk off in the bottom of the seventh by Joe Quintanilla and the Eastview Patriots. No shortage of offense for the Patriots in that game, but they will face a tough test tonight with Nick Silva taking the mound for the Georgetown Eagles, who enter tonight's game at 11 and 1. 2 and 0 in district play, as we said. Eastview at 4, 6 and 1. They are 1 and 1 in district play. We are just about ready to go for this one. Just waiting for everyone to get a little bit warmed up as Ben Berglund, the lead off hitter, steps into the box. We'll take you through the lineup for both teams here in just a moment. First pitch swing, and that's lifted into right field. That'll be down for a base hit, so Ben Berglund stays aggressive, and his good hitting streak continues. Ben in that high scoring game went one for three, but he also had a walk and a hit by pitch. So that brings up Ryland Pullen. It's Berglund, Pullen, and Huerta. It's been the same three uh, for all three games so far. Berglund today getting the start out in left field. We've seen him play all over the place. Pullen showing bone. That's a good one. This will be a tough cover. They'll just go back with the tag, and that'll be... Ooh, are they going to call him out at first? It looked like they didn't quite get the tag on him, but Pullen... Looks like he's going to have to head to the dugout. Bringing up Tyler Huerta with one on and one out. That puts Berglund into scoring position for the hot hitting Huerta with three for three with two walks. So we reached safely all five plate appearances in that game against Glenn. Huerta still playing out in center field as pulling the shortstop laid down the sacrifice bunt. No throw over, but you'll look Berglund back to the bag. Going through the rest of the Eastview roster, the four, five, and six hitters are Santana, Jesus Santana playing third base, first baseman Patrick Reyes, and the hero of the Glenn game, Joe Quintanilla, the catcher, will be batting sixth. Gary Torres, Ronnie Goldman, and Rendell Ellis will be rounding out the lineup. That will miss inside for ball one. Torres, the DH here tonight. Goldman going to be playing at second base. Ellis out in right field. Logan Niederhauser, who was so excellent in relief against Liberty Hill, will be taking the mound, getting the start here tonight. The 1-0 pitch with Berglund on first base. As Silva really looking at Berglund back there. This one's not going to get through the infield. It's a grounder to shortstop. The throw over is in time. So that'll be out number two. And the roller to shortstop keeps pulling, or excuse me, keeps bullet, uh, Berglund at second base. So a 6-3 put out to Huerta will be the second out of the inning. That brings up Jesus Santana. Jesus won for four in his last game, had a hit by pitch as well. This one foul tipped for strike one. Nick Silva on the mound for the Eagles. He will not be in the lineup tonight, so neither pitcher going to be hitting tonight for either team. It's an incredibly windy today, as you can see those flags out there in center field sticking straight out, as they have been all afternoon. Some residuals from the tornado situation that we had all throughout Central Texas yesterday. Hope you're all doing okay with that. Hope no one had any property damaged. But now we are out here, and my hands are numb already in the first inning. But I've been out here a while. So that's 0-2 now to Jesus Santana as he fouls that one back and out of play. Still Berglund on second base. Here's the 0-2. That's going to miss way high for ball one. Santana, the third baseman. 
looking to get his season going offensively. He has a hit in, a, in the each of his last two games, but that one's going to be way behind, and that's going to plunk Jesus Santana. He will head to first base. That one hitting him in the back. So that puts one runner on. Now you got Berglund at second and Jesus Santana at first base. Negates the sack bunt from Pullen, but that puts Patrick Reyes on, who's also been hitting it well. He's at first base three for five in the game against Glenn. So the wind's the killer here tonight. It's going to be tough to play the ball when it gets into the air out into the outfield, and any pop-up is going to be made that much more difficult. 61 degrees is the temperature on our first pitch. Hope everyone at the ballpark brought appropriate clothing because it's just going to get colder out here tonight. So two on, two out for the Patriots. Looking to strike first against the crosstown rival Georgetown Eagles. This one going to catch the outside corner of the zone. Strike one. Count goes one and one to the first baseman, Reyes. Silva looking in. Checks Berglund. Here's the pitch. That's big cut there from Patrick Reyes. He foul tips it into the glove of Zach Mazok, the catcher, for strike two. Now a ball and two strikes. Eastview down to their last strike in the top of the first. The one two. That one's hit well, but that's going to not get through the infield. The first baseman throwing over to Silva, who is there on the putout. So, a single from Ben Berglund in the leadoff spot and a hit by pitch from Jesus Santana is all that Eastview is able to muster there in the top of the first inning. We'll go ahead and keep it here as we transition to the bottom of the first. Let's go ahead and get that done. So for the Eagles, as we said, 11 and 1 coming into this game. Logan Niederhauser going to be the man on the mound to try and slow down this potent offensive attack that Georgetown has. Their leadoff man, Eli Hellman, is the shortstop. Catcher Zach Madock, uh, second baseman E.J. Davis, first baseman Reese Bell, third baseman Logan Smith out in left field. Ty Klaus Kissamore, D.H.ing in the seven hole is Riley Leninger. Hitting eighth is Andon Petty, and he is also in the eighth position out in center field. And hitting ninth, once again, right fielder Jacob Haddon. And we already said Nick Silva, the pitcher for Georgetown, not in the field tonight. Already gives up one hit and one hit by pitch in the top of the first inning. We head now to the bottom of the first. We are ready to go. We are underway in this one. Sun's still out. Giving us a little bit of warmth. It's been some very, the weather's been all over the place. It was a hot day on Sunday, got into the 80s. And yesterday was cloudy and stormy, had tornadoes all over the state. And today, it's just been a cool and extremely windy day. but now it will be Eli Hellman, the shortstop, number 21, stepping to the plate for his first cuts of the game. Eastview wearing their nice away uniforms. Patriots across the chest with the red and navy, the navy lettering and numbers with the red trim. Solid gray on the jerseys and the pants, blue hats, EV. And for... Georgetown. They're wearing the kind of desert digital camo look. The American flag numbers, which frankly makes them kind of hard to see. Pinstripe white pants, white helmets. And here's the first pitch from Niederhauser. That one's chopped to third base. Tough bounce. And here's the throw over. It will be in time. So one pitch out to start the game for Logan Niederhauser and the East View Patriots. Nice play over at first base by Jesus Santana. Let the ball come to him. Didn't try to go and chase it. Had plenty of time for the throw over. Santana, through this uh, short stretch that we have been here for, of course a small sample size, has struggled a little bit at third base, not making all the plays that he knows that he should make. 
So good to see him make a nice read and a nice throw over on that one. That brings up the catcher, Zach Mazoc. That one's going to miss high ball one. Good to see Niederhauser get a quick out in this top of the, or the bottom of the first, excuse me. But now here's the 1 0 to the second hitter, Mazoc. That's going to catch the zone strike one. So now a ball and a strike. That one skips into the dirt. So two balls and a strike to the two-hole hitter. Eastview looking for the upset here tonight. Is that one going to catch the outside of the zone as well? Strike two. Tough take for Mazoc. Now two balls and two strikes. Niederhauser looking to send his first two hitters back to the dugout. The 2-2. That one's chopped down the first baseline. That's going to be a fair ball, an unassisted put out. Patrick Reyes is there to put it away. So that puts Mazoc back to the dugout. Good start in the first two batters for Logan Niederhauser. That brings up a very tough hitter in E.J. Davis, number two, playing second base for the Eagles. The first pitch to Davis on the way. That's going to miss outside for ball one. I believe this is the umpire that Eastview had against Liberty Hill last Thursday. The 1 0. That one's taken outside for a ball as well. So a 2 0 count to the third hitter of the night for Georgetown. Reese Bell on deck for the Eagles. That is if we see him, but now a 3-0 count. It's going to be tough for Niederhauser to battle back against a very capable hitter in Davis. Here's the 3-0. That's going to catch the zone. Good take there for Davis. Strike one. His approach at the plate changes here with the 3-0 count, now the 3-1 count. As he takes a big cut at this one, chops this one foul and well out of play. That one's headed into the trees. Beautiful stadium out here at Georgetown. You can see the football stadium where both these teams play at home in the background out in left field. Now the 3-2 is belted into right field. That one's high, drifting back on it and all the way to the wall. And that one's going to get over the fence. Wynn caught a hold of that one. E.J. Davis with a good piece of hitting. Sends that one over the fence in right field for a solo shot here in the bottom of the first inning. Off the bat, didn't look like it had the carry. But wins well over 10 miles an hour here in Georgetown. Might have helped him out there. But Rendell Ellis was chasing it down, and he ran out of room. So Eastview can't get out of the bottom of the first unscathed once again. Now batting is Reese Bell, the first baseman. Bell chops this one right at Niederhauser, squeaked under his glove. So two two-out hits for Georgetown in this bottom of the first. Keeps the rally going. That'll bring up Logan Smith, the third baseman. Also wearing number five. So with Bell on first base, Davis hitting the solo shot before him. Keeps the bottom of the first inning going. Logan Smith, as we said, to the plate. First pitch, a breaking ball, a beautiful one from Niederhauser. Drops in for a strike. Got a nice shot of the whole ballpark. As diving to make the stop there is Quintanilla ball one. 
Bell with his size over at first base, probably not much of a, uh, a running threat on the bases. That one catches the outside of the zone, strike two. So now a two-strike count to Logan Smith. He's got a, a battle ahead of him. If he can make this an at-bat, Logan Niederhauser in a good position with the one and two. That one just misses outside. Quintanilla set, it, set up a little bit off the plate. So now a 2-2 count. This one's fouled off, so staying alive here is Logan Smith. Quintanilla due up for the Patriots in the bottom of the second. So now two balls, two strikes, two outs, one runner on. He's at first base, so time called here by Smith. The 2-2. Two -two. That one misses inside, ball three. So after retiring the first two batters, Niederhauser in danger of letting three straight Eagles get aboard here. Taking off. This one's punched up the middle, so no opportunity to get the force at second. The throw over in time as Bell took off on the 3-2 with two outs. So a 6-3 put out to end the inning for the Patriots, but two hits and one run scored off the solo shot from E.J. Davis. That'll send us to the top of the second inning. Due up for Eastview is Joe Quintanilla, Gary Torres, and Ronnie Goldman. We will be back in just about 30 seconds. You're listening to Eastview Baseball on Vibe Live. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. Inning number two starts now. That brings up Joe Quintanilla, number 13, the hero of the last Patriot game. He was one for five, but the one came in a huge spot there in the bottom of the seventh inning. So Joe Clutch steps to the plate. That one inside for ball one. The bat has been quiet for Quintanilla. He's having to work hard behind the plate. As this one, he punches into center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Nice little looper over the infield. So back-to-back -back hits in his last two at-bats for Joe Quintanilla. He was rewarded. Getting moved up in the lineup here today. Against Glenn. He hit eighth. So he's back in the, the six hole where he was against Liberty Hill. Makes that look like the right decision with a leadoff single. So back-to-back leadoff singles for the Patriots. Berglund in the first, and now Quintanilla in the second brings Gary Torres up to the plate. Gary DHing two for four against Klein with a walk as well. First pitch swung on. It's fouled back. So an 0-1 to the Patriot DH. Nick Silva back to the mound for another inning of work. This one goes low for ball one. Quintanilla taking some big leads over there out at first base, as you can see on your screen. Back at the back now. Keeps he's taking that extra step. This one misses inside. So that's two balls and one strike to the seven-hole hitter for the Patriots, Gary Torres. That one catches the outside corner of the strike zone. Patriot fans don't like it, but that's kind of been the uh, it's kind of been the mo 
here today. The outside corners of the zone are pretty big. It's kind of the same situation. I believe this is the same pyre as we said uh, from against Liberty Hill, and that was kind of the same situation back in that game. So here's the 2-2. That one's foul tipped. And dropping it was the catcher, Mazok. So Torres stays alive. Just got a piece of it. As the sun starts to drift back behind the stadium here in a few minutes. So two balls and two strikes. That one's going to miss well outside. So it's a big zone out there, but within reason. As now, in all three games, Eastview pitching has given up a long ball. As this one's lifted well into the gap in left field, that's going to get down. Screaming around second base is Quintanilla. Quintanilla going to get all the way to second. They're going to hold him up there. No, they're going to send him around, and it's a good idea that he came back. Oh, but it gets through! And now, no opportunity. They'll have to get back. And the ball is out of play, but now we have a rundown and nothing doing. So Eastview with some not very good base running, but they end up getting out of it. As the third base coach for Eastview was waving Quintanilla home, and if the, the throw was there in time, it probably would have gunned Quintanilla down, but instead, he was caught going back to third base. It was a weird situation. Torres came and stood all the way at third with Quintanilla before having to run back. Luckily, the Georgetown infield did not see that Torres was over still at third base, so he was able to get back. The throw home got through, so Quintanilla should have been able to score there if he wasn't heading back to the base. But instead, we'll just have runners at second and third. Very hard to score first to home. Even on a ball struck that well as Gary Torres sent that one all the way back to the wall on a couple bounces. But Gary Torres now, second base. Joe Quintanilla now third base for Ronnie Goldman. It's a good opportunity with no outs and two runners on for Eastview to get something going here as they head towards the bottom of the order. Ronnie Goldman, the eight-hole hitter, comes up. He got the day off on Friday. He did get some pinch running opportunities, or rather some courtesy running opportunities. But going back is Ronnie Goldman. He played against Liberty Hill. He went 0 for 1. Did have a walk, though. So Goldman looking to at least tie this thing up with an excellent opportunity to get an RBI or two. So in the top of the second, that one catches the inside corner. Strike one to Goldman. No double play in order right now, so should get towards the top of the order again with Ben Berglund. He's been hitting it very well. But now Goldman looking at 0-1. Now looking at 1-1. Ellis is on deck. Been pretty consistent in his role at the bottom of the order here for Eastview. Hit ninth in the last two games as well. This one swung on and fouled off. So Goldman... Looking at a one and two. Just got to put this one in play if you're Goldman. Here's the pitch. Takes that one. That misses inside strike one that looked like you might have froze Goldman there, but instead turns out to be an excellent take for Ronnie. Pushes the count to two and two. Still nobody out in the inning for the Eastview Patriots. So they haven't had a whole lot of trouble getting guys on base so far this uh, in this district slate as that one skips for ball three. The three-two count. Two runners in scoring position. Chance for Eastview to tie this thing up. This one's lifted high into the air. That one's drifting out of play, and out of play it shall go. 
caught over in foul territory by a spectator. As the count remains full. Eastview making Silva work out there on the mound. Silva steps to the mound. The righty, Goldman in the box. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. Strike three. That's a big K for Georgetown. As it picks up the first out with leaving the runners just where they were. It brings up Rendell Ellis, the left or the right fielder, excuse me. Ellis went one for four against Glenn. Lead off single in the fifth inning it was. So with two on and one out, the nine-hole hitter fouls off the first pitch. Half an hour in. The 0-1 misses for ball one. This one's hit on the infield. Runner coming home, so they'll make the throw over. The out will be there at first base, but coming home to score the first run of the game for the Patriots. Well, it was a pinch runner, Joe Quintanilla. Was the, uh, the result. His single got him on base, but it was Hector Perez that was on the bases as you can pinch run and for the catcher and the pitcher at the high school level. So that, that sacrifice, that little ground out there, that will keep Torres at second base, but it advances Quintanilla home. As that one's going to get through, Torres now with the chance to advance to third base. So at the end of the day, he was able to get over. So now two outs for Ben Berglund, but one run does come home. Ben's looking at a 1-0. That misses strike, or excuse me, for ball two. So this is Berglund's second time at the plate. He is one for one with a single. As he just a little bit late on that one, trying to send it opposite field into right, but it'll go out of play. Not quite around quick enough. So now two balls and a strike to the Patriot lead off hitter. Here's the 2-1. Ooh, that one misses inside. Almost got a piece of Berglund. Berglund trying to get on base to keep this inning going. It's been productive here so far. As that's a check swing, catches his own for strike two. Berglund wanted the walk, started to undo his shin guard and everything, but he left a step back in, now a full count. This one lays through the infield, but speared at the pitcher's bound by Nick Silva. Beautiful athletic play there by the pitcher as we will now head to the bottom of the second. One run scores. On a pair of hits and a little sacrifice there by Rendell Ellis to pick up the RBI. We've got one to one headed to the home half of the second inning. Back out on the mound will be Niederhauser. We'll be back in just about 45 seconds. You're listening to Eastview Baseball on Vibe Live. Keep it here. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. 
ViteView also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each ViteView ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out more about ViteView today. In for the bottom of the second. Niederhauser back to the mound. So up, bat, up to bat first is Ty Klaus Kaisemore, the left fielder. So the three do up for Georgetown are Klaus Kaisemore, Leninger, and Petty. Ball one to Klaus Kaisemore. Niederhauser missing on his first two pitches here. The 2-0 pitch to the leadoff hitter. This one's lifted into left field, but playable. Coming on to get it is Berglund, and he puts it away for out number one. So it's Riley Leninger. The DH to the plate. The lefty stepping in. Leninger, hard G. Got it. This one misses high for ball one. It's the last gasps of sunlight peeking over the buildings out behind us. That's going to be ball two. The wind's still coming in hard. You can see it out in center field. Look at those flags. So in this inning, six pitches, one strike for Niederhauser. But he's faced two and gotten one out, and he's still facing his second batter. So the 3-0, that's going to be down the middle, strike one. Endon Petty, the man on deck for the Eagles. The 3-1, that's going to miss well high. So that is actually the first walk of the game for Niederhauser. He's gotten to plenty of three-ball counts, but that's the first one he's actually let get aboard. First walk of the game for either team, actually. Jesus Santana was able to reach by a hit-by-pitch, but that's not quite the same thing. It is a free base, but... So now one out with one on for the Eagles. Looking to get their lead back. Runner goes. This one's hit through the infield. That'll go to the shortstop. The throw over from Poland is in time. Runner going to third base. The throw is in time. That'll be a double play. A bit unconventional. But Leninger was trying to stretch it on the hit and run to get three bases. He was not able to do it. He is gunned down at third base. And that is how the bottom of the second will conclude. No run score on a walk for the Eagles. That brings Eastview back to the plate. It'll be Ryan Pullen to lead things off for the Patriots. Huerta and Santana also do up. We'll be right back. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you.
back in it. We head to the third. So an unconventional end to the inning. They get Andon Petty on the hit and run. The 3-6 put out, but on the hit and run, Leninger was trying to go to third base, and he was thrown out. A beautiful throw over to first base, uh, from first base to third base. Patrick Reyes, Santana, able to get the catch and put the tag on. So now no balls and one strike to the leadoff hitter in this inning, the two-hole hitter, Ryan Pullen. Now a ball and a strike to him. After a game with plenty of errors on both sides, Eastview flashing some leather, making some good defensive plays in this one. A little early getting around on that for Pullen. He got good contact on it, just couldn't quite push it into left field. That's strike two. Cuerta due up. Over one of the game. Swing and a miss, strike three. As the throwdown will be in time, not sure if he needed to make the run anyway, but it'll be a swinging strikeout for Ryan Pullen. That is the second K of the game for Nick Silva, who's back out for his third inning of work. Huerta to the plate, the lefty. As you can see, that second baseman playing very deep along with the shortstop because Huerta doesn't like to push it to the opposite field very often. He might try and go through that big gap in the, in the infield, but Silva has shown the ability to not let things get by him as he speared Berglund to end the second inning, which prevents prevented Eastview from taking the lead as they had a runner on third base. But now two balls and no strikes to one of the most potent hitters in this lineup. That's going to catch the inside corner of the strike zone, so now two and one to Huerta. Good job by Silva just putting that in a place where Still found the zone to avoid 3-0, but didn't give Huerta much of an opportunity to, to swing at a good pitch. So, now 2-1. That one well inside. Huerta had to jump back to avoid it. But it's a beautiful day, if not a bit cold, as the sun is officially now behind the school. And we are in the darkness. Huerta fouls this one off. Count goes full. Nobody on with one out. Full count, Santana on deck. That one's foul tipped, and Mazok couldn't hold on to it, so the count stays full, and Huerta stays at the plate. This game moving a bit quicker than the last one. Not as many runs being scored yet, as that catches the zone. Strike three, Huerta got frozen. So back-to-back -back strikes to start off the top of the third inning for Nick Silva as he's starting to settle in, brings up Jesus Santana, who was a hit-by-pitch now in back-to-back -back games. And that's how he reached in the first inning. As he sends this one to second base, caught on one hop, the throw over in time, so a one, two, three inning for Nick Silva and the Georgetown Eagles. We head now to the bottom of the third inning. No runs on no hits there for the good guys. We head to the bottom of the third. Back in a minute. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott and White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Box Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. A 
Folks, this wind is getting unbearable. <laughs> it's dropping the temperature by what feels like 10 degrees. And I didn't bring a coat. But now the nine hole hitter leading things off for the Eagles now in the bottom of the third. <clears throat> Still have yet to get back around to the order a second time as they will do that here in this inning as this one is a gorgeous bunt, but Quintanilla is there to throw over in time. On a bunt that shallow, it can be hard. Quintanilla trying to get the ball to the glove without hitting the runner in the back. So he can't advance, trying to get on via the bunt base hit. But Eli Hellman now to the plate. He is 0 for 1. He grounded out to third base his first time up. It was a good sign to see Santana make a throw over that good. It's that first pitch to Hellman, the leadoff hitter. Finds the zone for strike one. Niederhauser out there once again. It's been a good start for him. Through two and a third. Just giving up the one. It was a blast out to right field, a solo homer. This one skips to the backstop. That'll be ball one. Nobody on, so no damage done. Two hits given up so far by Niederhauser. Through two and a third. Is this one, ooh, just off the tip of his glove. This one's going to get out to second base to throw over. That was going to be tough as the ball did lose a lot of its velocity, skipping back to second base there. So an infield single goes to the second hitter in the inning, but the leadoff hitter in the lineup, Eli Hellman. Brings up Zach Mazok. Grounded out to first base his first time up, the left-handed hitter. But now he's got a man on first base. Chance to advance the runner. Just one out in the inning for the home team. Runner goes. The throw from Quintanilla is on time but not online. So the infield base hit and a stolen base puts Hellman on second now. So one on in scoring position with one out. As this one's fouled off high and out of play, so that's strike one. Off the ceiling. A ball and a strike. With the dangerous E.J. Davis on deck. A.J. Click for the Glen Grizzlies also gave Eastview some homer troubles as this one's hit into shallow center as that's going to drop. They're going to hold the runner at third base, but they're going to send him to second. So advancing on the throw is Zach Mazok. So now they've got runners on second and third with just one out. Brings up E.J. Davis, who homered his last time up. We'll get a courtesy runner out there for Mazok, the catcher. I'll go ahead and pull up the lineup. I believe out there, now on second base, is going to be number four, Wade Denton. But I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen, but they've got these American flag uh, uh, numbers on their uniforms. It's kind of a silhouette. As this is going to be a bean ball there for Davis as he will head down to first base. So the base is now loaded. Reese Bell going to try and send him home. Bell singled his last time up. He has a chance to drive two in with anything into the outfield. That one drops in. It's going to be a ball. Just missed on the break. Try to get it to drop back in the zone. Couldn't do it. So now a ball and no strikes, nowhere to put him. That one off the glove, but no one's going to be able to advance. Smith on deck. The cleanup hitter, Reese Bell. 
with the chance to do some real cleanup work. Here's the 2-0. As this one's punched through the infield, that'll score one. They're waving him around. The throw from Berglund is, now they've got him in no man's land. The throw over, not gonna be in time. They've got him in a rundown. The throw home is going to be in time. He is out. So each runner advances, but they do get an out at home plate. That was the the uh, courtesy runner, Wade Denton, getting thrown out at home. He was told to hold up, and then he kind of rounded it too hard. And that ended up being his undoing. But Reese Bell with the single, and advancing on the throw, gets up to second. That brings Hellman home, and Mazok was the catcher. He was thrown out at home. But of course it was Denton. So now Bell on second, Davis on third, Smith up to the plate. He's now looking at a 2-0. Lucky for Eastview, only one run scores there, and even luckier, Georgetown shooting themselves in the foot to get the second out, so now no sacrifice in plays. That might now be relevant as this one's lifted into right field, settling under it. And making the play is Rendell Ellis. See, that scores another run otherwise. So very fortunate for Eastview that they were able to get that out at home. One run scores on three singles and a hit by pitch. We head now to the top of the fourth inning, swimming right along here in Georgetown, Texas. It'll be Reyes, Quintanilla, and Torres due up for Eastview in just a moment. I loved playing high school sports. I love the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No colleges called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now, as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Texas did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Top of the fourth. Patch Gray is at the plate. Grounded out. His first time up as he lifts the first pitch high and foul. Silva had to run over to first to get the put out on Reyes last time up. But now we head to the fourth where Eastview trails by just one against an excellent Eagle baseball team. As this one's belted into center field, center fielder coming on, going to try and make the play, running to make the catch is Andon Petty. Nice job. Got a good jump on it to get Patrick Reyes, who got some good contact on it, but that's baseball. Quintanilla to the plate. Singled his last time up. Came around to score the only run for Eastview in this game. Cho takes the first. That's in there for strike one. Torres on deck. Doubled his last time up. That one misses. So the first ball of the inning for Nick Silva, who is out there for his fourth inning. It's been an excellent showcase for him. Did struggle a bit in the first two innings, really settled in as he gets Quintanilla to swing through that one for strike two. He struck out two of the three batters that he faced in the third inning. Three on the day for him so far. He's now got Quintanilla down in a hole, one and two. The one-two pitch, that's going to miss for ball two. Here's the pitch. That one's chopped and foul. Smith tried to chase it down over at first base, but 
squeaked over the line. So the count stays two and two for the Patriot catcher. Takes this one outside. That just misses for ball three. Count goes full once again. The 3 2. That one's punched over to third base. Beautifully picked on the short hop. The throw over is in time. Good play at second base by Logan Smith. Brings up Torres with two outs, the 5 3 put out. So that's now eight batters in a row sent down by Nick Silva and Georgetown. That one's going to miss inside ball one. Gary Torres is the only extra base hit in the game so far for your Patriots. As he chops this one foul down the first baseline, so the count one and one. Down into the high 50s now. So we are running out of daylight. Zat's going to miss the outside corner ball too. Nice crowd for you here tonight. As that one's going to catch the leg of Gary Torres. He's going to head down to first base, hit him in the ankle. Comes up wincing, but he's all right. Doesn't look, doesn't look hobbled going down to first base there. He's good to go. So we've got another hit by pitch in this game. That's the second for Eastview batters. That's the third in the game overall. So the Patriots breaking the tie with that one right there. Coming to the plate now It's Ronnie Goldman. Struck out his first time up. Silva likes to take his time. So he now goes to work. The throw over is not in time, but it's a swing and a miss for Goldman. Steps off the rubber here. He's few screaming for a balk. Not going to get it. It's at least 10 seconds every time before he gets into his motion as that one's going to miss low for ball two. Start your pitch counter now. That one catches his own strike two. So now, one, two, count to the eight hitter, Ronnie Goldman, with two outs, one runner on. That one misses outside ball two. Goldman not back in the box yet. Now here he goes. Big lead over at first base for Torres. Here's the two, two. That's going to miss for ball three, so the count goes full. Gary Torres should be off and running on the pitch. Randall Ellis on deck, grounded out his, his first and only time up so far in this game. As the breeze not letting up. The 3-2 runner goes. That one's chopped foul, so Torres will have to go back and do the whole thing again. So everything a hit and run here with a full count, two outs.
The 3 2. Runner goes again. Swing and a miss. Got him for strike three. So two strikeouts on the game for Goldman. Brings us now to the bottom of the fourth. No runs come home on just a hit by pitch there. Nine out of the last ten hitters that Nick Silva has faced have been retired. The only one that reached was a hit by pitch. So the offense going to need to wake up for Eastview if they want to pull this one off on the road. Logan Niederhauser back to the mound for another inning of work. We'll be back in just about 30 seconds. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Question. When you walk into the boardrooms of the most successful companies here in Texas, who do you meet? Answer. Men and women who played high school sports. Education-based high school sports give us more than athletes we can root for. They give us leaders we can depend on. Question. So where will we find tomorrow's leaders? Answer. High school sports. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Some Led Zeppelin to bring you back in for the bottom of the fourth. A lot of classics here at Georgetown being played. Great bass in that song. Very rarely do you talk about the bass when mentioning Led Zeppelin, but I'm, I'm going to do it here. Do up for the Eagles in this one. Going to be Klaus Kiesem yeah, Klaus Kiesemore, Leninger, and Petty. So the seven, six, seven, eight hitters for Georgetown. As this is a first pitch belted through the infield, that'll be a base hit. Rounding it hard is Kiesemore, but he will reach nonetheless. So a single base knock. The second, just the first leadoff hitter in the game to reach for Georgetown, actually. Leninger up to the plate. Actually, Leininger. I'm having trouble with that one. So, Riley Leininger up to the plate. He was walked in the second inning. Tried to get another base on a hit and run and was thrown out at third base to end the second. If you remember that play. Is this one going to miss? No, that's going to catch the outside of the zone. Looked outside from here, but that's why I'm not the umpire. So nobody out with one on. As we head to the bottom of the order, the DH checks his swing there. They're going to call that a foul tip. So quickly, 0-2 to the Patriot DH. Logan Niederhauser looking to pick up an out after getting the leadoff man on base. He's got some room to work here with an 0-2 count. They're going to try and throw it over. That one's going to skip into the dirt. Reyes doing a good job of keeping that thing in front of him. But now no balls and two strikes. Runner goes. This one's foul tipped, so the runner will have to go back. This game moving a whole lot more quickly than our last one. Game nearly three full hours. Didn't even play those extra two <laughs> innings that they normally play in baseball. So nearly a three-hour game, just seven innings, but you saw the score. A lot of scoring in baseball means a lot more time. We've got a two-to-one game here in the bottom of the fourth, so it's moving much quicker, of course. Another throw over. Niederhauser really wants to keep him over at first base. Klaus Kiesemore, the Left fielder. Ty is now one for two in the game. He's your runner at first base. Leininger now at the plate. Still an 0-2 count. Just had one pitch since going 0-2. The runner goes again. The pitch out. The throw down is going to be in time, but not on the line. So we will be safe at second base. Good attempt there by the shortstop. Ryan Pullen. Just try and make a tag. And if that throws just a little bit closer to second base, I think that's an out. 
So now a 1-2 count. And now Leininger has an opportunity to get another guy in. This one's going to miss well high for ball two. And in Petty on deck. That one high, count goes full. So from 0-2 to 3-2. Now a full count. Here's the pitch. That one's well outside. Niederhauser missed, missed all of those in the same way. So now I'm not so sure that first pitch, that first ball in that inning was a pitch out. We're going to get a, a talking to over at the mound. And if this is it for Niederhauser, it was a good start for him. We'll bring the runners over. Conversation on the mound for Niederhauser. This doesn't mean he's out, though. The outfielder's staying put. Uh, let him have it. So the two runners are still Niederhausers, of course. They both earned. It was a single in a walk. Puts and in Petty. Petty grounded out his last time up. Pitch is high. Now Niederhauser just having a hard time finding the zone. Reyes charging in, expecting the bunt. So Niederhauser threw three complete. We are now in the top of the, f the bottom of the fourth, excuse me. Showing bunt, this one's going to miss high again. Hadden on deck. Zizou has had a little bit of trouble with the bottom of the order as of late. Definitely had a bunch of trouble with Glenn. Now here's a 2-0. That's going to miss high as well. Niederhauser was missing him high and outside. Now he's just missing him high. But now the count goes 3-0. and Now back to the plate. Here's the 3-0. Needed that one and he couldn't get it. So now eight straight balls for Logan Niederhauser. He loads him up. Kies, uh, Klaus Kiesemore to second, and Len Leininger to, let's start over, Ty Klaus Kiesemore to third, Riley Leininger to second, and in Petty to first on the four-pitch walk. That brings up the nine-hole hitter at Jacob Haddon. Got out trying to get on via bunt his last time. Keeps knee on the throw over. Still nobody out here, bases juiced. Eagles with a chance to break this thing open here in the bottom of the fourth. Niederhauser misses high. The 1 0 pitch. That one's in there for a strike one. So it's been a minute, but Niederhauser now on the board. A ball and a strike with nowhere to put him. Reaches out and punches this one over the infield. That'll get down. One run will score, but that will be it. So they move station to station. Haddon with the looping single over the infield. Brings home Klaus Kaisemore. Everybody advances, and we have got a 3-1 to one game. Still nobody out. Now the top of the order for Georgetown. This is their chance to break it open once again. Eli Hellman 
Singled, an infield single his last time up. He's one for two. That one catches the top of the zone, strike one. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Ball one. Defense had been keeping them in this thing. Now pitching starting to unravel here in the bottom of the fourth. As that's going to find the zone. Now one and two. Everything kind of went downhill when they had an 0-2 count to Leininger. Came back, walked on it, and Andon Petty got on via four-pitch walk. Hadn't singled a run home, but that's all he was able to do. So base is still loaded, still two outs, and that is going to drop into the zone. A beautiful breaking ball from Logan Niederhauser. So he's able to get the first out of the inning. It's a big strikeout, keeps everyone in place. But now Zach Mazok is one for two in the game. Mazok with the bases loaded, still an opportunity for a sack fly here. Anything in the outfield's tricky with this wind. Ball one. EJ Davis on deck. That one drops in, another good breaking ball here for Niederhauser, one and one. Here's the pitch. It's gonna skip in there. That's ball two. The 2-1, that's lifted high into center field. Huerta running back on it. He settles under it. That's going to be off the wall, so one run will come home. Another one being waved in. The throw will not be made. It squeaks past the Patriot infield. So two runners score on a ball that went all the way to the wall. Zach Mazok with his second hit of the game in back-to-back at-bats. So Leininger, Leininger and Petty come home. That'll, with the uh, with the way the runners were moving, they were expecting Huerta to get back to it, it looked like. Mazok only going to get a single off of that. But that'll be it for Niederhauser. Probably should have pulled him after Petty. But that'll end his night. He goes three and a third. Now Haddon moves up to second base, brings up E.J. Davis. John Doherty, number 22, going to step to the mound. We'll go ahead and take a break while he gets warm. Georgetown now pushes it out to a 5-1 lead here in the bottom of the fourth. We'll be back in a minute. Meet Josh. Hi, everybody. Josh is a high school basketball player, solid shooter, great teammate. Hey, don't forget my tenacious D. And he's my son. Uh -huh. So what does Josh do to be the best basketball player he can be? I play tennis. Studies show that student athletes here in Texas who play more than one high school sport are more likely to excel. Tennis does more than improve Josh's conditioning. It gives him a fresh competitive outlet, reduces the risk of injury by cross training, and introduces him to different coaching techniques and new friends. Don't get me wrong, hoops are my first love. Tennis just gives me a little break. So when the new season begins, Josh isn't burned out on basketball. He's eager to play. And you can see the difference in his game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association.
Doherty to the mound. Brings up E.J. Davis. Had the homer in the first. As Doherty has given up the long ball. I believe he gave up the long ball last game. So some danger here, but he steps to the plate, and that one's fouled off Quintanilla's helmet for strike one. So first pitch strike to E.J. Davis, who was hit by a pitch last time up, so he's reached safe safely in both of his ABs. 5-1 game with one out here. Runners on first and second. This one's fouled off, so a quickly 0-2 count to the three-hole hitter, E.J. Davis. It's the seventh batter in the inning right now for Georgetown. That one misses outside, ball one. So with Niederhauser not in the lineup, except for the, uh, the starting pitching, that will end his night. Will not move back into the field. Both of these runners the Doherty has inherited are his. So now with an 0-2 goes full, and that ball gets to the backstop, both runners are going to advance. So now no double play opportunity. Haddon at third, Mazok at third. Full count, infield comes in. As this one's fouled off, the at-bat will continue. Count stays full. Runners now at second and third. That'll miss. Ball four, run's going to come home on the pitch that gets to the backstop. The throw over will not be in time. That'll leak back to the pitcher's mound, but the runner will have to stay put. So Haddon comes home. Davis gets walked. Another 0-2 that then results in a walk for Eastview. His Mazok now up to third base. Four-run inning so far. Still just one out. Runners on the corners. Brings up the big body, Reese, or Reese Bell, excuse me. E.J. Davis into Reese Bell. Davis now via the walk. Reese Bell, two for two, a pair of singles. This weather's getting to us out here. Runner goes, and they're going to try and pull. Ooh. They'll give up the runner there at second base. They're trying to pull off a little squeeze there. So Davis swipes that back. Reese Bell, no balls and one strike. That one misses inside. One and one to the big first baseman. So this one's fouled back. That one clears the park. So now a ball and two strikes. Logan Smith is on deck. Runners in scoring position at second and third base. Doherty, the one-two. His throw. That's going to miss the zone for ball two. Just low. So a two-two count now. Two runners on. Still just one out. Misses inside. Full count for Doherty. And 
in danger of loading him up once again. Here's the payoff. That one's roped through the infield. That'll score one, being waved around and coming to the plate. The throw home is not in time. The run will score. It's a 7-1 ball game as the bottom of the fourth continues to be a downpour for the Georgetown Eagles. Brings home Mazok, brings home Davis. Reese Bell, three singles in this one. So an eight to one ball game, five of those coming in this inning right here. Throw over, not in time. Smith up to bat now. As this is the ninth hitter of the inning for the Georgetown Eagles. Zizvi was keeping pace through three. Not so much anymore. Does that one skips in the dirt? 2-0 to Logan Smith. That one misses inside a 3-0 count. That's going to miss ball four, so still just one out as Logan Smith reaches on four pitches. They have officially batted around. As that brings up Ty Klaus Kiesemore. As they're going to get Doherty off the mound, it looks like. Pitching change. He's now stepping to the mound for your Patriots. It's number 17, Aaron Velos. We'll go ahead and take a break of our own. We'll be back in about a minute. You're listening to Patriot Baseball. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Box Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Back in for the bottom of the fourth. Eagles have batted around. This is the second at-bat of the inning for Ty Klaus Kaisermore. Singled, came around to score. Still one out, now two on. As Doherty was not able to record an out. It's Velos now with a 1 0 count. Fouls this one back towards us at strike one. So 
So a ball and a strike to the Eagle left fielder. This one's also fouled back. So a ball and two strikes now. Velos. As this one is just over the glove of the second baseman, Goldman, rounding third base and coming home is the big man, Reese Bell. Bell will make it home. The throw over to third is not in time, so going to third base is Logan Smith. Reese Bell comes around to score. Brings up Riley Leininger, walked his first time up in this inning. So that's two base hits in the fourth for Kaisermore. For Klaus Kaisermore. Brings up Leininger, swing and a miss. Now a 9-1 game. That one skips in the dirt. No one will advance. This Klaus Kaisemore on second with the throw on the previous play. At third base is Logan Smith. Now two balls and a strike to the 11th hitter of the inning for the Georgetown Eagles. Still just one out. Two and one. The throw over. Not in time. Santana gets it on a hop. Three balls and a strike. Bases in danger of being loaded again. So the pitching just not there. After three, they are not able to get it out. That is six straight players reaching safely. Now the 11th hitter of the inning. So, no, excuse me, that should be the 12th. Yep, and and Petty up for his second at bat. This one's lifted into right field. This one playable. Ellis ranging back for it, catches it. One run's going to come home. The throw will not be in time, and a runner advances to third. So now into double figures are the Georgetown Eagles. So Logan Smith comes home. Leininger's going to have to stay at first base. But now two outs in the inning. Center fielder Andon Petty surrendering the second there. Now this is the bottom of the order. The nine hitter, Jacob Haddon, singled his first time up in the inning. Runner at third base. Misses inside. Eli Hellman struck out. His first time up in the inning is on deck. In there, strike one. So it was once a 2-1 game. It's quickly ballooned into a 10-1 game in just this bottom half of the inning, but now a 1-2 count to the nine-hole hitter, Jacob Haddon. That one's going to hit him. So a 1-2 turns into a hit by pitch. And the bases are loaded once again. In danger of setting up a run rule. A 
was, uh, at the end of the day, I believe it's up to the um, each coach, each manager. But UIL rules say that if it's ten runs after four and a half, and the home game is and the home team is winning, then that is a run rule. Because that's a check swing for a strike for Eli Hellman. But not there yet. If Eastview can get out of this, bases loaded, jam. It will have another chance at it. So either way, they'll get another crack at it, but they would need to plate a run or the game would be over. Velos stepped back to the rubber. A 1-1 count to Eli Hellman recorded the first out of this inning. That one misses. So two balls and a strike. Big cut there for Eli Hellman, who also struck out earlier in the fourth inning. A 2-2 two -two count, two outs, bases loaded. Here's the pitch. That one's chopped foul, so we'll keep it going. Velos, you can limit the damage. As a base hit likely scores two more, time called by Hellman. Two-two is hit high in the air. That'll be a pop-up on the infield, but no guarantees. Goldman ranging back can't make the play. Been that kind of night. As another two come around, as at least these aren't earned. But that puts Haddon over at third base. Now runners on the corners with two outs. Is it Zach Mazok up to the plate for his first run? Uh, for his first at bat here in the fourth, he singled outside. Is I'm running out of space to? to put the scorebook in. That'll miss low, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Mazok takes. Two balls, one strike. Three balls, one strike. Still got one empty bag. So a walk won't result in more runs. As this one's popped high into the air, ranging over Santana, but this one looks like it's going to get out of play in a whale. So the count is full. Two outs. So Haddon might stay put, but Hellman will be running because that one's going to miss outside. As that brings up the power hitter, E.J. Davis, with the bases loaded. He'll put Denton back on the bases for Mazok.
as Hellman reaches second base. Still over at third is the nine hitter Jacob Patton. Outside. Is this one's belted foul? Ball and a strike. Ten runs have scored here in the fourth as this one's hit over to second. Goldman fields it, juggles it. The throw over is not going to be in time. That's now two errors in the inning for the second baseman, Ronnie Goldman. Brings up uh, Reese Bell, who they have not gotten out yet. Three singles in the game for Reese. Down the pipe, strike one. Thirteen to one now. As the runners move station to station on the air. As this one's punched high into the air, where to looking for it, settles underneath it, backpedaling. There it is. A lot of runs and a lot of hits. Be right back. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Box Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Question. When you walk into the boardrooms of the most successful companies here in Texas, who do you meet? Answer. Men and women who play high school sports. Education-based high school sports give us more than athletes we can root for. They give us leaders we can depend on. Question. So where will we find tomorrow's leaders? Answer. High school sports. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Got a new pitcher in for Georgetown. I believe it's number 11, Scott Beam. But once again, it's very difficult to read these American flag numbers even from, from pretty close. This is the camo with the American flag pattern. It's messing me up. But would be Rendell Ellis do up, but it looks like we have a pinch hitter. It's number seven, Trey Walter. Walter taking. That's two balls and no strikes. Swing and a miss for Walter. Two two now to the leadoff Patriot. Oh. 
So Walter goes down on strikes. No pinch hitter for Berglund. He'll stay out there. He is one for two today. Berglund takes ball one. Inside as well, ball two. We'll be pulling on deck for the Patriots. It was out and misses high for ball three. The 3 0 pitch. In there, strike one. The 3 1. That's chopped over to third base, fielded, and an unassisted put out for Reese Bell. Brings up Pullen with two outs. Ryan, first pitch swinging, fouls it back. The 0-1, one. that one's lifted into the air, but that'll tail foul, so now 0-2 to the Patriot shortstop. That one's hit hard, but it can't get through the infield. Second baseman gets over and makes the play. And it looks like they are calling it. The umpires are. So what felt like a pretty competitive game through three, three and a half, I'll say, really uh, kind of collapsed there in the bottom of the fourth. T 11 runs for the Georgetown Eagles, and Eastview unable to answer. So that'll do it for us here. At least you show them a little bit of mercy as the mercy rule takes effect. The final score, 13-1. Eastview still only counts as one loss. Falls to one and two in district play. Georgetown getting the victory at home in the Crosstown Classic. They're three and zero. Oh. Eastview now going on the road on Friday, having to take on one of the other best teams in this district, Rouse, the other two and zero oh team in play. Well, now Georgetown three and zero. Oh. Rouse don't have their result for tonight quite yet, but that'll do it for us. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Sorry about the result. Because right now it is clear the, the, the Patriot bullpen issues right now. But still got a lot of season ahead of us. We'll have one more game for you this week on Vibe. It will be on Friday. We'll be on the road at Rouse, so getting uh, rid of a lot of these away games early. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast. I have been Jack Farrell. 7 p.m. first pitch time on Friday. We're going to go ahead and sign off. Hope you all have a great night and a great rest of your week. We will be here on Friday to kick off your weekend. It will be Eastview at Rouse. Final score here, 13-1. to The home team gets the victory. Good night, everybody.